Uh, Don Morris here from Southern Illinois University Aviation Technologies and I'm going to show you how to put a termination on a Strataflex 111 hose. This is a medium pressure hose with a steel braid in the middle and we're going to put a removable uh, termination on the end. We have a ferrule across here and this ferrule is going to come outside and it's going to reinforce the end of the hose like you see on this end. It's going to go over the top and it has reverse threads on it to bring it down into the end of the hose. Then we have the nut and the nipple, and those two are going to screw down into the ferrule, and between the nipple and the ferrule, it's going to pinch the hose and support it all the way around, and that's how you can get the rated for approximately 2,000 PSI out of this system. It's a pretty good system, but it does take some work. The first thing we need to do is cut our hose to length. Because it's a steel braided hose, you have to watch out for fraying, and we're just demonstrating, so I'm just going to cut just a tiny little bit off the end. And you'll notice I've taken a piece of masking tape, and I have put it around the hose. That'll keep the braided jacket from fraying too badly. Now cutting the hose is a pretty simple matter of putting it inside the vise, and we're going to use the finest tooth tack saw blade we can find. If you have an abrasive cutoff blade, those uh, chop saw, those work really well but we're going to use our finest tooth hacksaw blade. This is a 32 tooth per inch blade, and that works pretty well. Bigger blades are gonna do a lot of ripping and pulling. So right in the middle of our tape, or to whatever length you measured, we're going to take and cut off our hose. If you have a Less fine two packs of blade, you'll get an awful lot of tearing on the hose instead of cutting. As it is, we'll still get too much tearing, but that's part of life. So here's the end of our hose. Blow out all the fuzz, and you can see we pretty well cut everything on the hose, except we got just a little bit of stuff hanging around the outside. So get out the handy dandy Swiss Army knife or wherever you get your scissors and we're going to cut all the little extra fraying pieces across there in preparation for terminating the hose. Now our next step is to screw the nipple onto the outside of the hose, or the ferrule onto the outside of the hose. So we're going to very carefully move that into position and normally we would righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, but this is reverse thread so we Righty loosey, lefty tidy. So I guess that's lefty tidy this until it comes all the way down. And looking inside here, we should see that our ferrule has moved all the way down to the uh, and, and seated in the bottom of the hose. You can also see from my finger that uh, there are hazards associated with doing this. So just a little blood, it uh, makes good system lubrication. Now, I'm going to take the nipple, or the ferrule, and I'm going to chuck this whole assembly inside the vise. Got to support it, and that supports it pretty well. And the next thing we need to do is we need to insert the nipple and the um, nut across here. There's no way this is going to go in as it is, and if we spin on the nipple, that's not going, uh, on the nut, that's not going to turn the nipple. So what we need to use is we need to use the proper tool, and the proper tool is called a mandrel. I have a bunch of different mandrels for different size tubes. Uh, but this particular mandrel, this is the one I'm going to use, and it's going to very carefully, I'm going to drop the nipple over the top of the mandrel. I'm going to put the nut down on top there, and I can tighten the two of them together. And what this does is it gives me something that's going to help this slide into the tube. So I'm going to need to tighten this up together, and if I tighten the two of these together, they're going to all lock together as one unit for installation purposes. So I've locked it all together, and now we're going to be able to insert this into the tube. But there's one more thing we need, and that's lubricant. The best lubricant that you can use is whatever fluid is going to be running through your system. So we're going to use system fluid as a lubricant, and one of the things I'd say about lubricating this particular hose is lubricate it until you think you've lubricated it enough, and then lubricate it some more because you cannot over lubricate um, one of these hoses. But we've got a lot of lubricant on there right now, which means I probably want to use a little more. There we are. Now we have a lot of lot lubricant on there, and we are ready to go ahead and insert that.
The mandrel goes down fairly easily, but there's a little lip when we come to the end of the nipple. And that means we're going to need to press downwards on it. And this is why I like this particular mandrel. Most of them have a hole in them. I get the biggest Phillips screwdriver I can get onto there, and I push that down. And using that Phillips screwdriver to push down and to rotate, I begin to tighten the nipple and the mandrel, the entire assembly, down into my ferrule. Once the threads engage, and you've got to make sure that the threads are firmly engaged or you just strip the threads out. Once the threads are engaged, I can begin to twist this. It's getting tight enough now that I want to use the wrench. Always use the wrench from the top side, not from the bottom side. And we're going to lock this thing down. How far down should we go? We need to go down until the nut almost bottoms on the ferrule, but not quite. And to make sure that I have the proper amount, I loosened the thing up and it's starting to twist now. So I'm going to have to tighten it up. That happens fairly often. I'm going to have to tighten it up. There we go. Now it's moving again. And when I get to the proper depth, I should have just a little bit of play on that nut so that it can spin freely. And I'm going to use a very fancy tool called a note card to let me know when I got to the proper depth. When there's just enough room for the note card to slide between the nut and the ferrule, I am going to know that I've gotten to my proper depth. So here we come. We're getting close. About a 32nd of an inch or a little less. My note card can just barely go between there. If it can't go between there, it locks together. Now I'm pretty much done with this termination, but I do need to get this uh, mandrel out of my hose. So I unlock and withdraw the mandrel. The whole assembly is quite warm at the moment. Now this is where you find out whether or not you lubricated it well enough. Because if you didn't lubricate it well enough, you're going to have a problem when you pull this out and there's going to be little particles of rubber and shavings. But if you lubricated it well enough, there won't be any damage. My joint, my nut should spin. It should have a tiny bit of end play. And when I take and hold the thing up to the light, I should be able to see that there is no uh, fraying and no little chips of uh, um, rubber or anything there. And that looks is the way that this particular one looks. Um, I'm not going to be able to show you that with the, uh, with the video, but I can see that there's no uh, damage there. And so now I can take this, I can use it wherever I would use a hose. And uh, I, before I actually put it on a plane, I'm going to want to test it, uh, pressure test about one and a half times system pressure, and I am going to want to flow check it both directions just in case there's any damage. But I can tell you right now there's no damage on that. That's a good joint. So that's how you uh, terminate a Strataflex 111, uh, very similar to an AeroQuip 303 medium pressure hose. We are going to remove a removable fitting. The easiest thing to do is start by checking this thing in the vise because we're going to have to hang on to the ferrule of the fitting. So once they're chucked in the vise, now we can go about removing it. But there isn't any way that it will remove if we simply turn the uh, end. So we're going to have to use the mandrel to remove the fitting. It's not particularly difficult to lock the mandrel onto the end of the nipple. And we can very carefully, great job, Don. We can very carefully remove the nipple by screwing it out of the fitting. You'll notice that they do come off, but they don't come off easily. Once the nipple's out, removing the hose is not particular, particularly difficult. 